Hey friends, wanted to do another video talking about a word that I invented or used, and as I mentioned previously, this is a sort of sport or game that I like to play when there's some kind of meaning I want to convey that existing language or idioms doesn't really do it for me. And this word is self-oriented, which is in distinction to selfish. And I'm not completely sure how it happened, but my sense is that I started really having this jarring or grating sense when I heard people describe their own behavior or motivations or other people's behavior or motivations as selfish. It just didn't seem accurate to me. It didn't seem useful and it didn't seem kind. And sometimes they're they really pointing to something, but it just didn't quite hit the mark from my own perspective. And a lot of the times when this would happen would be when I was working with people with Mary in the empowerment department of the service guild. And I don't know, we'd float the idea of some project or the person would mention some dream for a project that they'd have that they wanted to do. And they would have some resistance come up and be like, oh, if I did that, that would be selfish. And from the outside, for me, I was like, that's not selfish, the, doing this project. Um, just to make up a hypothetical example, say someone wanted to, I don't know, host some kind of party where they gathered people and, you know, talked about something that they wanted to talk about. And they're like, oh, that would be so selfish if I did that. And I was like, what are you, what are you, what? That's not selfish. To me, to me, it's not that nothing is selfish. It's not that there's no use for that word, but I, I at least want to reserve the word selfish for something that chooses yourself over others in a way that harms others, that knowingly, intentionally harms others so that it helps you. That's selfishness. I don't know if uh, you were in a building, trapped in a building with some friends and there was only so much food left and you ate the food for yourself knowing that they would possibly die because they didn't have food. That would be selfish. Uh, hosting a party where you talk about things you're interested in, to me, is not selfish. It's not harming other people. It's either neutral or even possibly beneficial to them. And from my own experiences, it's often the case that when we follow the deep desires that we have, the callings that we have to do specific projects or follow certain ideas, even though it's motivated by our own desire and our own values and what we want to see in the world, how we want to spend our time, if we really trust that, that often ends up being of tremendous benefit to others. It's not harmful to others, it helps them. And so to me, I want to use the word self-oriented to describe things that, yes, are motivated by your own desires, your own values, what you want to do with your time, what you want to achieve in the world, but something that's neutral to other people or even has the possibility of, or even the likelihood of benefiting them. It's not harming other people. It doesn't hurt them. It may even benefit them. And to me, that's self-oriented. And yes, it does benefit you. Yes, it is motivated by your own desires. Yes, it is connected to your desires, but it's not harmful to other people. And to me, it's inaccurate and not useful and not kind to describe that kind of thing as selfish because I want to reserve the word selfish for something that's deserving of some kind of moral connotation, like reproving of someone's behavior, where you're like, that's, that was selfish that you did that, that was harmful. And, and really that's, to me, saying something like that, describing someone else's behavior or, or even your own behavior as selfish is a really heavy move. It's, it's not something you should do very often. And yet people use the word selfish all of the time in conversations and at least in the conversations that I have, they have typically it's a it's sort of described in relation to themselves. They're like, oh, that's so selfish if I do that thing. And the thing that they're describing more often than not is not something that would harm other people. It, it's neutral or, or beneficial for them. So I like to use this word self-oriented and in, in the cases where it's appropriate. And of course you can still use the word selfish, but I want to reserve that for 
really the appropriate moral connotation and circumstances where that's an appropriate thing to say, which, which is infrequent. To me, it's infrequent that you would describe someone else's behavior as selfish, where that would be a skillful or useful thing to do. There are fewer contexts where that really makes sense, I think. And also to yourself, this is such a trend, but I see people being much harder on themselves than they are on other people <clears throat> and saying things to themselves that they would never say to someone else. If you just think about it, I, I mean, I don't know who you are watching this video, but probably you wouldn't just go around describing someone on the streets behavior as selfish or your friend's behavior as selfish. And yet people are so ready to describe their own behavior as selfish. And in the same way, people have all kinds of negative self-talk where they're say very cruel words to themselves or ascribe very cruel motivations to themselves that they would never vocalize towards someone else or do so very rarely. And so having this word available, I think is on the one hand about giving yourself space to be kind to yourself and just honor your own desires and your values and what you want to see in the world and not just punish or shame or blame yourself for having those desires. And then also really to make space for the possibility that what you desire could actually be of benefit to other people, that your own desires are intimately connected to what would benefit other people and what would help them. And I see that so consistently that when you really honor those desires and bring them into the world, take steps and actions to manifest them that ends up inspiring other people and benefiting them and rippling out in ways that you couldn't expect. And I think it's worth honoring those desires. And ultimately, for me, the world that I want to live in isn't one that's just a benefit to other people. I really care about service and being a benefit to other people and helping others. But I don't just want that. I don't want to help other people to the exclusion of helping myself. Or, and, I, and I don't want to sacrifice myself for other people. I want to live in a world that benefits everyone, including me. And because I am mm, the locus of my own experience and my own life, I have to sort of start here. My friend Tyler Alterman has this lovely phrase of fractal altruism, where you start with yourself and also the parts of yourself from a parts work perspective, and you love yourself and help yourself and integrate yourself and harmonize yourself. And then that ripples outwards in this sort of fractal way where you love and support and benefit and harmonize with your friends and your family members and your local community. And then that ripples out to, you know, the region that you're in and the state that you're in or the nation that you're in and then to the whole world. And from a Buddhist perspective, all beings, it's, it's like, but that starts with yourself. And that just makes sense. You are the locus of your own life. And if you're going to act in the world, it's practical to start with yourself. And, and you also are the one that has direct access to your own desires and your own dreams and your own values, and therefore can speak for and advocate for and act on behalf of your own needs and desires and what you want. And provided that that's not actively, intentionally harming others, I think those desires are actually neutral or, or wholesome, beneficial even. And it's worth listening to them. Of course, it requires discernment, you know, but so does everything. So uh, I, yeah, I just really want to make space for people to be kind to themselves and honor their own desires and see the value and the wisdom in them and see that as self-oriented rather than selfish when it doesn't really need that moral connotation, that blame, that shame. That's much rarer in my experience than the things that are you know, totally fine if you do them and or really beneficial for other people. So yeah, that's an explanation of this word and what it means to me and why I use it. And I hope that it helps you and maybe reframe some things in your own heart and your own life. And feel free to use this word if you like it.